Hi everyone, um, welcome, welcome to today's, today's live session. session. We, we do apologize for the slight, slight delay in start there, there. Um, just a slight technical issue. issue. Um, but okay, we'll, 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 try we'll try it again. again. Uh, I'm Will Spencer, Spencer the Customer Experience Manager here at Farsos, and I'm joined by Joe McCone, who is our resident SEO expert here at Farsos. I'm um, also joined, joined by our technical uh, expert, Tom Coke Jones, Jones, who's just running things in the background. So he's off camera, uh, but he is here. So if we're talking to someone uh, in the background, that will be who it is. And today we're talking SEO theory um, and SEO is a huge subject. So we're not going into anything in too much detail. We're just trying to give you a bit of an overview of, of what you need to understand to try and make improvements. And so you can do a bit of further research yourself. Um, so, so just, just give you a bit of a, a starting point to, 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 to start and how you can actually make some improvements really, really quickly to try and boost your ranking. Should, should last about 40, 40 minutes or so, um, and, and we'll, we'll take questions, questions at the end, end but if you have any questions so throughout, just ask away in the chat function there, there um, and, we'll and we'll try and kind of answer them as we go along. But yeah, we'll do a proper Q&A at the end as well, so feel free to talk to us. And with that in mind, let's just talk about what we're actually going to cover today. So, so first up, up now we're going to talk, talk about search engines and how they actually work. work. Um, so, so we'll talk, talk about what search, search engine optimization, optimization actually is, because, because a lot of people don't really understand the, sort of the concept of it when they're first starting out. I remember when I first started out, I just thought Google was searching the live internet, but it doesn't quite work like that. Um, and also, you put your own website, you put your own website name into a search bar and think you're done. But that's again, that's not what it is. So, so we'll go into a bit more detail, detail about that. that. We'll, we'll have, have a look, look at uh, SEO versus paid ads. So I'm sure you're aware when you do your search results, you see the, the, the ads at the top. So we'll have a look at the, the differences between organic and paid ads. Then we'll look at some more practical tips on your on-site SEO factors and off-site SEO factors and how both of them help determine your rank. Then we're going to look at some keywords, very important part of search engine optimization. Then we look at your content um, give you a few tools, uh, mostly free, that you can use. I um, would highly recommend you use. We use them here at Farsos. And um, then we'll just look at how you can measure success because that's a really important thing is understanding how the changes you make actually affect your ranking. And then at the end, we will take some questions. So without further ado, I will hand over to Joe as he knows far more about this stuff than I do uh, to talk about search engines and how they actually work. Thanks, Will. Um, so I thought a great first step um, in this presentation would be just to give you a very brief overview of um, exactly how search engines work with regards to SEO. So um, search engines, as we all know, offer a great way for users to access information on the web, and they do this through a basic three-step process. The first step is crawling, where the search engines bots will crawl the web revisiting pages that they've already visited and following links to discover new pages. The second step is indexing, where the search engine's algorithms decide whether or not that page is worth including within its searchable index. And then finally, we have ranking, where the algorithm then assesses um, the pages net against a number of factors, such as the quality and relevance of the content, to decide exactly how highly it should rank against particular queries. Yeah, and I think um, I said the first time when we were doing this, uh, <laughs> when, when no one could hear us, uh, the indexing is a, is an interesting one. I think from when I first started learning about search engine optimization, that's a, a really important one. Um, when your website gets searched by the called by the bots, they add it to the index. So Google will have a different index to Bing, for example. So when you're doing a live search, you're not actually searching the entire internet, you're searching the index of whichever search engine you're using. Um, and it, that can explain why quite early on, a lot of people don't understand that and websites not listed in search results. That'll be why, just because it's not in their particular index. So it's just basically a big database. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, it's a, as a, the point I made earlier, you know, the, the reason why Google can't simply can't index everything is because, you know, with the, their database of however many billion pages, um, they simply can't uh, afford to index everything. And so they have to be selective and try to only offer up high enough quality, unique results. 
So what actually is search engine optimization? Um, well, exactly like it says on the tin, um, SEO is the practice of optimizing a website to appear in Google or other search engines um, for a set of targeted search queries, um, of course, with the aim to capture more traffic, which will then lead to um, further conversions, leads, sales for your business. Um, the most important thing to remember is that SEO is a long-term process. You know, it, it isn't something that can be switch on and off overnight like PPC can be. Um, but if you do stick with it and you continue to make those improvements over time, um, things will snowball and you'll, um, in a year, two years, SEO could become quite a healthy channel for your business. Um, and I would say, particularly nowadays, as the search engine algorithms become more and more sophisticated and you know, everyone else on the web is a bit more savvy as well. Um, I would suggest that you really try to improve your site in all areas um, if you want to give yourself the best chance of ranking via SEO. Yeah, we'll give you some tips on that a little bit later on when we talk about the on-site and off-site stuff. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting. Um, so are we having a look at the search engines page there? Just to have yeah, a look please. at... Yeah, please. Yeah. There we go, Tom. <clears throat> nice job. Okay, so... I thought a good, a good thing to show um, show you guys would be to talk through just quickly talk through a search engine results page. Um, so this is for the uh, VPS Linux um, keyword, you know, very relevant for fast hosts. Um, and at the very top here, you can see these sponsored results. Now these um, have been paid for um, where individuals or businesses have paid Google to be listed um, against certain queries at the top of search engine results. And then, of course, below the paid ads it's, is where we have the free organic listings that we're talking about today. Um, and you, you can see a few elements there. Um, but most importantly, I'd like to point out the meta title, which is the blue link that you click on, and then the meta description, which is uh, the snippet of text below. And these are two very important um, items. Uh, the meta title, particularly, not just for getting encouraging users to click through to your website, but also for ranking. And then the meta description, which can offer bits of additional information to help encourage users to click through and visit your website rather than anyone else's. Absolutely. Okay. So should we have a look at... we? touched on paid ads there, so PPC or pay-per-click. Um, so what are the benefits of doing organic search engine optimization rather than just paying to be at the top? Because that seems like a nice little shortcut. Yeah, well, the primary, you know, the, the most obvious benefit of SEO over PPC is that um, the conversion, the website visits and ultimately the conversions that they drive are free. You know, you don't have to pay Google for anything. And so it's an excellent way for businesses to attract qualified leads, at minimal cost. Um, and following on from this, the fact that these organic listings are free allows you to do so much more than um, paid search will allow. Of course, if you're paying to be included in these results, you want it to drive sales. And so almost invariably, PPC ads, PPC campaigns will be very fo simply focused on the bottom line, whereas SEO can cover the whole marketing funnel from um, informational queries like customers, um, just doing some initial research um, all the way down to those commercial queries where look customers are looking to buy. Um, and in doing this sort of holistic market marketing activity, you'll be able to build that trust and credibility with your audience that simple paid activity wouldn't allow you know the thing to think about is that yes you know let's say you have a paid ad for your product and customers can come and buy it and they get it delivered it's a great experience but ultimately what differentiates you from another site that might come around tomorrow and offer the same product at a 10 percent lower price you know you need one thing that seo and this holistic effort can do is really to hammer home those benefits of work, you know, buying from you, working with you um, in all areas. Yeah, I think. Um, and the 
Sorry, Will. The That's final me. thing to say is simply that um, SEO and paid ads can work well together. You know, for example, if you have a query that you rank number one for in SEO, then that means um, you may not need to invest quite as much into the PPC for those keywords because simply because you'd be paying for clicks that you otherwise wouldn't have um, gotten, that you would have gotten um, with the organic listing. Um, and that frees up budget to go elsewhere or simply to save the business money. Yeah, I was going to say when I really interrupted your flow there, um, okay. the, the paid ads can be expensive. I am, there are research terms that cost like a lot, right? even for one click can cost, well, I'm not sure what the upper range is, but it's certainly over about £30. So mm. when you're talking about converting customers and stuff, uh, organic is always going to be the best place to be um, just because it's free every time someone clicks on it. So yeah, um, it, it can get very competitive and very expensive to to do those paid ads because ultimately it's a, it's an auction. Um, whoever's bidding the most amount generally, there are other factors, but generally speaking, um, it, yeah, it can get really expensive when you're going up against people with big marketing budgets. Um, we are actually doing a live session on pay-per-click uh, next month. I haven't settled on the date yet, but if you are interested in that, it's probably worthwhile noting that we will be doing sort of an, similar to this one, just an introduction to pay-per-click because um, it is extremely useful marketing and very good for targeted uh, targeted marketing. And you know exactly how uh, how it's performing compared to how you're spending. So it's a, it's a useful topic. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so um, on-site SEO factors. So these, are, as the name suggests, um, these are to do with everything that's actually on your website and the way that um, these factors affect uh, how highly you rank. Uh, the first one to talk about is keywords, um, which I'm sure we've all heard of. Um, keywords are important because these are the words or phrases that users are searching to find your business, your products, your services. And so when you're creating a page about um, a, a particular product or, or set of keywords, um, using those keywords strategically within the content is incredibly important. Um, I would say one thing to caveat is that remember to try and write for your customers first and not to write for Google. Um, you know, you want to write naturally in a way that will appeal to your customers and, and make the page a, a good experience for the user. Um, and I would say um, keywords should be used in a sort of hierarchy. You know, when you come, come to do your keyword research, which we talk about later, you know, your most important keywords will be in things like the meta title and then further down in uh, headings on the page, you can use other keywords that are sort of sm sh smaller volume, but related. Um, and following on from keywords is URL structure. So the a well-structured website is simply the foundation of SEO success. You know, the URL hierarchy of your site is one of the most important elements to help Google understand what your website is about um, and to understand the hierarchy and relationship between pages on your site. Um, and each when you come to map out the uh, potential URL structure for your website, it's really important that each page is housed logically within each category and that every page serves a unique purpose. Um, you know, some examples to talk about, say, if you say for an e-commerce site that so sells clothes, you know, the, the structure might be, might have, if one category might be something like, um, you know, men's clothes, shirts, short sleeve shirts with each of those related items serving a unique purpose. Um, and then on that uniqueness point, there is something um, which we in the SEO industry call ca keyword cannibalization, which is where you might create two pages that serve the same keyword intent. So in the course of your keyword research, you might find two keywords that are related that perhaps you think are distinct, like let's say coffee machines and coffee makers. You know, if you were to create two pages on your site, each serving one of those queries, neither page would ultimately rank as highly as it could do because those pages serve the same purpose and would essentially fight one another 
for rankings. And so it's, it's always important to map things out and really try and keep your website to the highest quality sort of set of pages that you can. Um, and following on from that, we have content optimization. You know, once you have um, your URL structure and those keywords that you want to target mapped out, um, it's time to start creating content. We will go into the into a bit more detail on this later, but the most important things to remember are content relevance. You know, no matter what you're doing in SEO, um, you should always make the content as relevant as possible to the intent of the query that the page is seeking to serve and then with and as hot create it in as high quality as you can you know that means allowing users to complete their goals quickly and efficiently um whether that's uh seeking a how-to guide or looking up for other information or if they're looking to purchase um and wherever possible try and make content unique you know always think what unique added value can I bring um, that no one else on the web can, you know, and, and that's where those insights and experiences that you have from running your business in whatever industry it may be can become a unique advantage for you. Um, and then we have internal linking. Now, internal links simply refer to links um, pointing to a page on the same website. Um, and in addition to the content on each page and the way URLs are structured on, on your site, um, the way that pages link to one another is another, um, very important factor in how Google assesses the, the relationship and hierarchy, um, of pages on your site. And so it's vitally important to internally link in a way that makes sense for your users and to guide them along a journey that you might want to make and to link related pages, you know, uh, an example of effective internal linking includes things like, um, linking through to related products on product pages, or for example, if you're, if you've got a how to guide, um, about a particular product or service, like then linking through to that money page where customers can transact. And then finally, in terms of on-site factors, um, we have page speed. You know, we, we've all used the web um, and we all know how frustrating it is when a website doesn't load quickly. Now, page speed isn't quite as important as some of these other factors, but it's undisputed that a faster website um, offers a much better experience for users and makes them much less likely to click off and, and go visit somebody else. So wherever possible, I would try and make your website as fast as you can. Um, and ways of, ways of doing that include things like, um, compressing images, um, minimizing the use of things like scripts and plugins on your site. And then of course, using the, the right hosting. Yeah. I think, um, again, as a bit of an, an SEO uh, newbie myself, I think page speed is one of those ones that's probably a little can trip you up a little bit. Mm. Um, because it gets a bit more technical uh, when you start looking at that. So one of the tools, again, we will we'll talk about it in the in the tool section. But I use PageSpeed in, Insights quite a lot. It's a Google product, um, and it will literally break down the page and tell you how long each each uh, each element takes to load and stuff. So it's a really useful sort of benchmarking tool. So if you need to make changes, you can see what it does. But it gives you tips and things on how to improve those page uh, load speeds too. And also Tom, um, who obviously is not on camera, has also created some really useful uh, guides on images and the best use of those because quite often they can be um, a bit of a memory, a bit of a memory hog on your uh, on your website. So how you can actually make them smaller in file size without sort of compromising on quality. So that's on our YouTube channel as well. But yeah, that's definitely I just want to just chuck that in there because page yeah. speed is definitely one that can be a, a little bit trickier. Yeah, it's definitely important, but you know, um, in a lot of instances, you may have to work with developers to really make changes to the sort of nuts and bolts of your site, but it's definitely worth mentioning. And there are easier ways that, um, non-technical people can still make changes to improve it. 
Yeah. I think if you're using like a content management system like WordPress or something, sometimes you'll just have to accept that there are some things you can't change about that. So mm. if you're not scoring like 100% on page insights, don't worry. I think we're going to be the uh, the bottom line there because there's uh, some things you'll look at and you just won't have a clue uh, yeah. what's actually causing it to... Uh, to... I, I would say page speed is a, a sort of game of diminishing returns. You know, make those yeah. changes that you can do easily, but in comparison to things like quality of content sure. and backlinks, it's not quite as important. So I wouldn't um, stress about absolutely having to get try and get yourself to 90 out of 100 or anything like that. Yeah. But, you know, if there are easy wins, then by all means, uh, seek them out. Yeah. Okay, so off-site search engine optimization factors. So I always find this one a little bit more interesting, but uh, yeah. Hmm. What do you think? Yeah, so off-site SEO factors, you know, we've just covered everything that you can do um, on your own site to influence rankings and now off-site SEO factors. These refer to everything else on the web that can have an impact. Um, and starting off strong with by far the most important off-site um, SEO factor is backlinks or link, link building. Um, and so backlinks, or sometimes you might see them called external links, are links pointing from other pages on the other pages or sites on the web to your website. Um, and now these are incredibly important in Google's eyes because they're essentially considered sort of votes of confidence um, from other websites that you're a trustworthy source on the web. And so if you've got a lot of backlinks from websites that are either highly authoritative, like um, national newspapers um, or government websites, or if they're highly relevant to your industry, um, then these are going to be a massive bo bonus for um, your SEO and your future rankings. Um, reputation and reviews, you know, that's another important one to mention because what your customers say about you and the sort of sentiment around your brand on the web is still highly relevant to Google's eyes. And so, although it obviously has, um, you know, this is a sort of general business thing, you know, we all want to give our customers as many of our customers as we can a great experience. Um, but I would, it's another thing that really benefits your SEO is having those good reviews. Um, yeah, yeah. I was just gonna just gonna say you might have noticed earlier when we're looking at that search results page as well, the fastest um, trust pilot score was underneath the results as well, mm, yeah. which is also again you're selling your website from that search engine results page. So if you can, if you've got a really good reputation online, um, you can add that. I think is it metadata? Yeah. So what you've seen there is um, called it's had it's had a few names over the years. Um, back in the day, it was called schema data. Um, nowadays, it's called uh, structured data. But essentially, what uh, schema or structured data is, is um, snippets of code that help Google to understand the information on a page, because ultimately, you know, Google is using bots and algorithms to assess page content, you know, it's not it doesn't have a human understanding. And so what this structured data allows, uh, allows you to do is essentially break up the most important pieces of information, um, such as, you know, what the product is, what its price is, uh, what your reviews are online, etc, and feed that into Google. So it has a an easier time understanding your site. And you put that code in your on you code yep. that onto your page, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're not covering that just as a heads up in it's sort of much more depth. But again, mm. hopefully you can have a bit of a better understanding so you can kind of research it a little bit more yourself if that's something you're interested in for your website. Mm. And the, the next thing to talk about is um, brand mentions and citations. So following on from uh, the point about reviews, you know, not just what your customers are saying about you, but what everyone else on the web is saying, you know, whether that's... Um, industry publications, influencers in your space, or, you know, experts in your field, you know, if you have um, positive mentions, stories, podcast appearances, anything like that, um, where you and your website are featured um, in those relevant, relevant places, and you're talked about positively, then these will ultimately have a knock on effect on your ability to rank highly in Google. 
Um, and the final thing to mention is social media. Now, although social media, social posts, links from social media sites aren't ranking factors, it's still very, I, I thought it was very important to mention because social media is simply another great way to get your brand out there, um, attract more visitors and create that brand awareness that um, is so difficult to build. Um, and that is very important for SEO because ultimately if a customer or a potential customer is looking at two results um, in a search engine results page and they know your brand and they don't know the other one, then they're going to be more likely to click on your result. Okay. So um, with that in mind, what are some key focus areas? So if you're just starting out and you want to kind of have the biggest impact you can in the shortest amount of time, what are some areas we can actually take a look at that will sort of get you there quicker? Mm. Yep. So we've already touched on keywords uh, briefly, um, speaking about how you should use them naturally within the content, within things like meta titles, headings, and so on. But let's dive a little deeper into the subject. Now, the first step in almost any SEO activity is going to be keyword research, where you'll use tools um, such as Google's Keyword Planner or other suites, which we'll mention later, um, to allow you to identify the sorts of, of keywords or phrases that users are entering into Google to search around your product. Um, when you're performing keyword research, I would say it's really important to broaden your horizons a little and not just focus on those um, transactional or commercial keywords and instead try to consider the whole funnel. So, you know, if, if you imagine you're selling a product, if you have content around common questions that customers have, you know, how to use it, what's better, A versus B, et cetera, then creating those pages and the, that content will increase your authority around the subject in Google's eyes and ultimately raise the rankings of that sort of key page that you're looking to where customers transact that you're looking to improve. Um, carry on. No, I was just going to say keyword research. We do cover that a little bit in the tool section as well, mm. um, because that in itself is a bit of an art and we could probably do a whole session on keyword research. Yeah. Um, and I would say, you know, in addition to the insights that you have about, um, that you'll be able to find from various keyword research tools, again, you know, use your own knowledge and experience. If there are common questions, common issues, et cetera, that you know customers have around um, your products or services, then by all means use that and create some quality content um, on your site about that um, because, you know, it, if it's something that only somebody in the know would, would have knowledge of, then that may very well be a bit of an advantage for you, for your site in terms of being an authority on, on the subject. Um, I would say the next one very important step is always to validate keyword intent. Now keyword, keyword intent generally, you know, it, it means, um, keywords, you know, can have multiple intents, you know, that could be informational, somebody looking to find something out transactional, they want to buy something navigational, they want to find somewhere, etc. And I would say never to assume, um, you know, quite often in my career, you know, there have been keywords that I thought should have been transactional, i.e. Um, customers looking to buy something, whereas in reality, they were informational queries. And when I put those put that keyword into Google, I was served a load of blog posts and, and guides and that sort of thing. And so in that instance, the in, intent of the keyword was informational. And I would say always to match what Google believes the intent is. So if a keyword brings up a load of blogs, you probably want to create a blog or, or, or another piece of informational content to rank for that. And then finally, um, you have to assess the competition. You know, if, if you've, if you know, there's a keyword that you want to target and you put it into Google, but that first page is dominated by big name brands, you know, highly authoritative sites, and you've got a brand new, new website 
it's quite unlikely that you'll be able to dethrone them um, very quickly. And so rather than going for the sort of high, very high volume, um, short tail keywords, you should consider sort of lower volume, longer tail ones instead. You know, while the the overall search volume might not be quite as high, it's obviously much better to get a piece of a smaller pie than to get none at all. You know, and an example of um, short and long tail keywords could be something like um, running shoes um, versus cheap trail running shoes. Um, you know, because it's so generic, then the the query for so the search for something like running shoes is almost certainly going to be dominated by very big name um, clothing shoes brands, whereas something more specific because it's less competitive, you may have a fighting chance. So some con now, talk about content, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, now content. Um, you'll have heard me talk about these two, two things already, but um, these two words need to be burned into the brain of anyone looking to do SEO, and that is intent and relevance. You know, no matter what you're doing in SEO, no matter what sort of page you're trying to create, um, you need to strive to serve the user intent as closely as possible with content that is not only um, highly relevant to that query, but also in as high quality as you can. You know, the question to always ask yourself is what value can I add? Um, you know, how can I make my content, my page, whatever it is, um, not just uni unique from everyone else in the web, adding value that no adding value insights, etc., that no one else is, but how to craft as quality and experience as you can. You know, it's not just about the what's on the page, but also how it's displayed. You know, formatting, design, UX. Um, and things like including multimedia is a great way to do that, you know, um, including visual elements like images, infographics, even embedding videos, you know, whatever you can do to serve that query as closely as possible and create the ideal experience for a user um, will all be to your benefit, not just for SEO purposes, but also for converting customers. Um, and I would say on content, you should try to revisit it on a regular basis. You know, um, Google wants content that is fresh and up to date. And so, you know, if there's something that's topical, like say a, an industry report with a load of stats, you know, if you've still got the 2020 version up on your website, it's highly likely that even if it ranked highly before Google will have been pushing that down for a while because it's simply not may not be relevant anymore. Yeah, I think um, a blog is a really good way of doing that as well. Um, I've managed a, a, a site that didn't have much in the way of updates that you could sort of do regularly just because it was what you call a leaflet site. Is that right? It's a leaflet site, right? Uh, or post yeah, site, brochure right? site. Brochure site. Depends That's the word it. I'm looking for. Brochure site. I'm sure they have many names. <laughs> yeah. So just the website that was, um, it, it, there wasn't really content that you could kind of update regularly because once you've added all the sort of the content and information about your business and everything like that, it wasn't really much you can do to kind of keep it fresh. So blog is really useful for that. Um, it's it's just a good way of showing showing the search engines that your website is still being updated regularly um so yeah that was something we we sort of did and it, it did help you know, it seemed to help a lot uh, there would have been other factors as well but we did get it to rank quite highly so it's uh yeah it's useful uh, useful to use a blog for that sort of thing yeah um so we may have mentioned a few of these so far, but uh, what tools can you use um, if you're trying to work on SEO and improve your your site's visibility? You know, this of course isn't an exhaustive list. You know, we could talk for twelve hours about all the various tools out there, but here are some of the most important and free tools that we would recommend. Um, Google Search Console is 
an excellent tool from Google that allows you to track things like the technical health of your website, as well as organic traffic. Google Analytics is a sort of all-in-one SEO um, analytics tool, which is great for SEO, but um, everything else that you do, uh, marketing and tracking your website, um, Bing Webmaster Tools, uh, Bing equivalent of, of Google Search Console, PageSpeed Insights, where you can enter a URL and Google will tell you everything that might be slowing you down. Uh, Google Business Profile or what used to be known as Google My Business, an excellent way to take up more space in the SERP and get yourself listed, particularly for local businesses. Um, Ahrefs Webmaster Tools, a free tool from Ahrefs that allows you to look at the sort of technical aspects of your site a little more closely. And then our uh, the fast hosts online marketing suite, um, which will, will know slightly more than me about. Yeah. That one's not free. Um, no. it's a, almost kind of a shameless plug, but ultimately, um, if you're kind of just getting started out, it's a useful tool. Um, there are, there are four sort of aspects to it. Some are more geared towards some pay-per-click, but you can just get the, the one, the parts you need. Um, and it will basically help you with keyword research. It will show you the, what your competitors are doing. Um, it will show you sort of like daily updates on, on your ranking and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a, a place where you can manage it really easily all in one and just take some of that kind of confusing white noise away, um, which is good. But yeah, from, from a keyword research point of view, it's useful. It will, it will show you how much competition there is for keywords and suggest to you keywords that are relevant, but not maybe might not be so competitive. Um, so yeah, it's a good good tool for that. Um, but yeah, it, if you're a fastest customer, it's it, it's it's a tool that's available to you. Um, some just a couple of other points on these tools. Uh, the Google Business Profile, I think, is a, a really useful one if you're doing local business. If you're not online only, again, anecdote from my own personal experience is um, I was helping my father-in-law um, start a uh, tutoring business for children. And by far the biggest impact I had was a listing on Google business profile, because when people were searching for local tutors in Gloucester, it's um, the map was showing up in the search engine results page and he was enlisted in, in those map results as well. Um, so yeah, it's a really useful way. If you're a local business, strongly recommend doing that as soon as possible if you haven't done already. Um, and also one that's not listed here that's huge as well is Moz. Um, they do offer a free tool, SEO Moz it's called, sorry. Um, they offer a free tool. And again, they've got their own databases on things like keywords and things like that. So all of these companies are slightly different. Um, so depending on your budget and things like that, they are, they're all very good. Um, but they also have some good tools for sort of research as well. Uh, a few beginners guides to certain topics that are a little bit more in depth than what we're covering here too. Um, but yeah, Bing, Bing Webmaster Tools, Bing is the se is it still the second biggest, do you know? Yeah, yeah, especially with um, the advent of things like ChatGPT in being integrated Which, into it. Yeah, yeah I was going to talk about that. So AI is obviously throwing a little bit of a spanner in the works to an extent because we don't really know what that's going to do to traditional search engine um, rankings and things. But uh, yeah, being a, probably a slightly ahead, I would say, than Google um, in AI mm. functionality at the moment. So there's a good chance that they'll sort of start gaining a little bit of market share um, just because their implementation of ChatGPT into the search engine is really good. Um, so yeah, I mean, we don't really know what that's going to look like yet, but it's a really interesting topic to keep on top of if this is sort of your, your starting of your journey. Um, bit of a start of a new era, I think, for for these sorts of things. So, yes, that's a, that's my my input over with for that one. Okay, so measuring SEO success, you know, uh, as we all know, um, if it can't be measured, it can't be managed. But fortunately, SEO is highly measurable. Um, you know, a few general principles, I would say identify what you're trying to do with SEO, you know, almost invariably that that's going to be bringing in more traffic and bring in more customers. But, you know, what sort of customers would you like to attract and trying to set measurable goals based on that? Um, and once you know the type of customers that you want to bring in, you can then select, you can then identify the keywords that you want to rank for. And you can use tools like 
Ahrefs and Google Search Console to track the um, the rankings of those to monitor how they're improving over time. Um, and I would always I would just say in make it as if if you're new to this, which I assume many of you may be, um, just make it as simple as possible and try to align those SEO goals with the core goals of your business and of course to revisit them um, on a quarterly half year basis just to make sure that SEO is still on track to deliver what you'd like it to for your business. So yeah, and what then, should you no, do first? Oh, I saw I've no, that's, yeah. that's all right. But what should they do first? Yeah, so I appreciate that for those of you that are brand new to SEO, this might have been a little bit overwhelming. So I wanted to finish off with a slide with some key points for what just what you you know you should do first um, if you want to work on your SEO when you go away from this. So the first group I would talk about is for websites that have no visibility. You know, you're listed in Google, but really the only clicks that you're getting are from, from people searching your brand name. So you're not really appearing for anything else. I would say an easy place to start is trying to build some initial backlinks. Um, and a good place to start there is things like um, local business or industry directories, um, as well as creating social profiles. I would make sure that you have those sort of real business validation um, pages like you know a, a thorough about us um customer service pages like contact terms delivery returns you know whatever is relevant to your business that you know is is important information for customers to know and then once you have those sort of basics done um it's simply to start populating your important pages with some high quality content you know one of the whenever i review a site that isn't really appearing at all. One of the first things that I almost always notice is that the pages are just very thin. You know, there just isn't really content on there to help Google understand what your page is about and ultimately to give it a reason to rank your page over, over others. And then, you know, once you've taken those initial steps or if you're, you've got a website that, you know, it, it, you get some organic traffic, it appears for some um, general queries, but you of course want to strengthen your SEO. Um, the first port of call is to create more commercial pages. If there are um, commercial keywords you're not targeting, for example, if you have um, a category page for you know whatever products you're selling, but you don't have any pages to capture sort of related queries or product specific queries, then to add those. Um, is an easy way to create more sort of doorways to your website that can help generate leads and revenue. Um, because at, at the end of the day, there are essentially two ways to improve an SEO. You either rank for more keywords or you rank, or the keywords you already rank for, you rank more highly. So if there are keywords that you aren't covering, then I would always prioritize getting that coverage. Um, as we've mentioned before, one of the best ways that you can improve the ranking and, and authority of your website is uh, through something like blogging, because in doing so, you know, you're adding so much more information for Google to help it understand what your website is about and to help really increase your authority in Google's eyes on, on the, su the subject of your products, your services, whatever it is, you know, at, at the end of the day, if you, if your website sold shoes, for example, and you just had a few pages where customers could buy them, but no no other information, you're not really giving Google anything to help it understand or give it a reason to rank you. Um, and then finally, back on, on the point of things like backlinks, um, I would try to reach out to local papers, build really and try to use those unique, th that unique data and the unique insights that you may have um, from your business or, or just from your industry and try and craft stories that they would want to put on their website where they can then 
mention and link back to your your site as the um as the contributor yeah i think uh i don't think i've really got anything else to add there um so i think that is the end of the content there so i don't think we've had any we haven't had any questions so far but we are happy to field any questions if anyone has any um, one thing I just would say is obviously it's our first time running one of these sort of live sessions in this format. Um, if anyone's got any feedback, we'd always appreciate that as well. Um, it's not necessarily, I don't think, any of our uh, primary job functions to kind of do these live streams. So we wanted to try and share some useful information that potentially would help some of our customers just to, to improve their businesses a little bit. But any feedback, please do let us know. Um, we will be doing another one of these next month and we're going to focus on pay-per-click marketing um, and sort of how you can try and do it and be efficient because there's a, if you don't know anything about it, it's, it can, what can happen, which is dangerous is you set up a load of uh, ads that aren't targeted properly or anything like that and end up spending a fortune um, that doesn't actually lead to any kind of sales or revenue generation. So yeah, we've got a similar thing next month. If you're interested, check out your Farsos perk section, uh, which is available for your Farsos control panel. And we'll be posting the link for that fairly soon. Uh, we're not set on a not set on a, a date for that yet. So, um, but yeah, this recording, if anyone wants it for future reference, will just be Tom, I think, available on this link. Yeah, just give me the thumbs up. So yeah, just save this link and this uh, this this. The, this webinar uh, will be available on this link for for so till the end of time i guess or however long we get told to, to keep it up for so yeah you can come back in and uh, flip for it if you want to okay so uh, i've got a couple of questions and things um can you show an example of embedding scripts yes you can um, okay tom's now, gonna have to show you this i think isn't he i think the the easiest way Worth noting at this point, there is a delay between the questions coming through and us talking. So we see the questions in real time, but there's a stream delay of probably about 30 seconds or so. So um, if you're asking follow-up questions, it might take, it might look like we're not answering them. But... Yeah, embedding scripts. Now, do they mean something like structured data or, you know, just using JavaScript in the website or something like that? Because it's, I'm just thinking it might be a bit difficult to, really display just a snippet of yeah code sure on the yeah so uh big Vern, if you can uh give us something a little bit more specific than that we can try and help you out there um and yeah give it just just so we can uh, know what we got sort of what we're trying to show you um so video galore is asking you mentioned shrinking photo sizes how do you know how far to go without uh uh, smile in the site for the user but i'm guessing that's spoiling the spoiling the image as someone with an image heavy site um do you uh, that's probably one more for tom who hasn't got a mic at the moment hmm. um how far do you need to go tom do you want to do you want to answer it and i'll relay it or uh yeah sure um oh i can reply in chat I'll reply he in can chat. he's gonna he's gonna reply in chat as fast so, as ah, header scripts so do you want to just do you want to show an example of header scripts yeah sure um so ju just on the the point about images um before i forget Yes, you know, if you do have a very image heavy website, like say if you're a photographer or something like that, you know, you can't just compress images to, to infinity um, as other, other sites may be able to do. Things you can do would be um, making sure that you're using next gen image formats like WebP. Yeah. Um, so WebP is just a um, the sort of most modern um, image format that is used online these days, you know, and it's much faster to load than sort of more old school ones like JPEGs. Um, and if, for example, your site already features a load of uh, JPEGs um, or other outdated image formats, there are plugins and tools that you can use to convert them. Um, but I would say that's the easiest thing. Compression, it's difficult, you know, that might, that may require a bit of trial and error, you know, saving it in Photoshop with a sort of a quality score of 50 and things like that. But that just might require a bit of trial and error. Yeah, I think there's not really an exact answer to that question. Mm. I don't think um, it's going to depend a little bit. It's going to depend on, are you using the images like to sell them commercially? Because at that point, you're going to want them at super high resolution. 
uh, or are you just kind of showing off your uh, your website? Um, but oh uh, yeah, D Tom's replying as fast as so there. Um, but to be fair, we, the videos Tom's done are actually really good. I say to be mm. fair, like I wouldn't have expected them to be. <laughs> the uh, yeah, Tom did a really uh, extensive thing, and he even taught it even taught our marketing team a couple of things. So I would highly recommend looking at Tom's videos on that. And again, there are other sources of information that aren't us because you know we might have some biases. Um, it's always worth checking out other sources as well. Um, I suspect there's going to be sort of a lot of um, photographers who have probably got blog posts on exactly the same topic as well. Um, but you're very welcome. Uh, thank you for coming as well. Uh, so should we want to show Big Vern some header scripts here. Um, Tom, I'm, could you... I think the easiest thing is probably just to open the Fast Hosts homepage and view page source. Um, it might be a little difficult to... You know, it's not going to be that visually appealing, but it's probably the best thing code not being visually appealing really <laughs> well it depends on your taste <laughs> it's not for me i have to say come on tom i believe in you Ooh. you can do it you can do it just right click view page source yeah does not want to uh -huh. he's on laptop isn't he so oh, oh. come on there it is Hey. <laughs> um, so just scroll down slightly so we can see the um, Trustpilot one. Yeah, I was going to gonna say that the Trustpilot yeah. one will be a really good way to, yeah. to show that. So ooh, slightly further up. To me. Perfect. To you. To me. To you. Yeah. Um, so it's slightly difficult to know what to talk about, but, you know, you can see here that we have some scripts. Um, in the code of our homepage, you know, these are the, the one that is perhaps most obvious is the trust pilot, um, other trust pilot scripts, you know, these are scripts that we're running to, um, be able to display a live trust pilot score with number, a number of reviews that is pulled from, um, trust pilots own API, API and database. Um, and that's an example of you know, a very common script that you'll see on websites, you know, I wouldn't say to avoid using scripts because, you know, they can do very useful things, but when, when they're unnecessary, they're simply taking up loading time. And so anything you can do to shave off those, those milliseconds, um, will be beneficial. Yeah. And those, um, just worth pointing out, um, my coding knowledge is extremely limited, but those are in the header section of the website, right? Is that? I think they might be. Am in, I right or not? They're in the in the body. Yeah. Or no, 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 they no, are, they in, are the in the head. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they're it, depending again. You, usually, if you're using a content management system like WordPress or website builders or anything like that, they'll have the head, somewhere in there you can add header scripts. Um, so yeah, you normally add this sort of stuff in there, uh, mm. but yeah, hopefully that answers your question there, big fern. Uh, so if you do have any follow-ups, please let us know and we will endeavor to, to try and between us, try and show it on the screen. Um, so we can try and give you a better idea. Uh, in the meantime, if anyone else has any further questions, please do feel free, feel free to fire away. Uh, but yeah, there is a, a little bit of a delay, a little bit of a delay here. So yeah, about, it's about 30 seconds, Tom. Yeah, he's nodding his head. Okay. I do hate the delay sometimes. It's it's a, hard yeah, we are, we are just waiting a little bit now. <laughs> it's a bit like, um, you know, when you see a, a reporter on the news and they talk to someone and they're just looking with the mic. Yeah, waiting, waiting to talk. But. Ah, okay. So, big fan. So, I've been using the website builder essentials. Doesn't seem to have an SEO analytics function disabled. Can't stick the link into the header. Ah, yeah. So I, that one's going to ca probably catch all of us out. I said dare yeah, say because I don't know enough about the very uh, high level functions of that sort of stuff. But in my understanding, if you go to page options on there, there should be sort of a, a somewhere you can add header scripts, um, and you should just be able to put them in there. Um, that one, if you contact us, if you're on social media, probably the best thing to do is give us a, I've dropped, I've talked to our support team, but if you message us on Facebook, Twitter, just DM us, 
um, and just say for the attention of, I don't know, Will or Tom, um, I can get someone to have a look at that and get back to you. But yeah, you should. Oh, I wonder if, I wonder if I've got a feeling. Yeah, I th I've got a feeling something's coming back to me now that it might be that you can't add scripts into head to the header in Essential. I think it might be a complete function, but I will get back to you on that one because I can't. I honestly, I don't have enough of the of product knowledge on that specific product to to answer that question. But yeah, um, if yeah, like I say if you want to contact us on socials, uh, DM us um, or or contact our support team. We can certainly answer that one, but I've got a feeling that might be a, a, a website builder complete function for uh, header header uh, header scripts. Yep, you're welcome. Sorry, I can't give a complete answer uh, now. Uh, yes, lack of knowledge there. Um, but yeah, again, thank you everyone. Uh, if any more questions, we're happy to stick around and answer them. Otherwise, we'll call it a day in a, in a minute or two. Um, but yeah, any feedback, please do give it to us because we would like to improve. It's always good. I want to give you the best best experience possible. Mm -hmm. Kind of my job. Can we just, yeah, just quite, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I hate these. I hate that 30 seconds. I could talk. Uh, I could talk rubbish over the top, but it's kind. Of, that's kind of my specialty: filling awkward silences. Okay, I think that's gonna be uh, gonna be it because we've um, we've got. Yeah, I think we've answered all the questions that have been answered, and we'd like to just say thank you to 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 all of you who've come along and watched us today. Um, it, we do appreciate it, and. Also, thank you for the feedback, Video Galore as well, and uh, and Big Fern and Andrew as well. We also very much appreciate you guys. So yes, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot, everyone. All right, we'll call it. I'm going to give it 30 seconds of awkward silence, <laughs> and then I reckon we'll call it a day there if there's not been any further questions. All right, and uh, have you got have you got a fancy outro as well, Tom? You haven't got a fancy outro. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Next time. Next time. Next time we might next time we'll get you in front of the camera as well. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There's an exciting one for anyone logging in next time. You hit it here first. It's gonna be three of us. But it won't be you next time, will it? Because uh, I mean it's no point watching without me. I know. That's the it's the main uh, main attraction. It's gonna we've got our paper our paper click expert on for the next one, so so quite a specialized amount of knowledge which is... yeah 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 so for anyone interested in ppc that would de definitely be worth watching cool all right i think i've managed to fill about 30 seconds of awkward silence so uh thank you so much to all our viewers for coming along and being our customers we really do appreciate it and hopefully we'll see you next month take care everyone <laughs>